Ready for more stories? Welcome to Reminiscing Our Highline History, a radio show presenting the memories of our community in the Highline area. Listen to a new episode every week, Monday and Tuesday, with your host, Roger Price, at 106.5 LPFM, South King County. Good morning. I'm Roger Price, and I'm a a volunteer at the Highline Heritage Museum, and I'm going to uh, interview Dixie Marinkovich today. She's uh, lived here her whole life in Burien, and she uh, grew up right across the street from Highline High School. So we're going to start in with her telling us, telling me about uh, her experiences as a young girl in Burien and uh, born in Seattle, I believe, but came out to Burien, lived in Burien. So you can uh, go ahead, Dixie, and we'll get started. There weren't any hospitals in Burien at the time, which is why I was born in Seattle, at Providence. But Dr. Maves, who was the first full-time doctor in Burien, was the one who oversaw me delivered me and took care of me until I went off to college. And uh, let's see. So you, you, uh, you were born downtown, but then you, but you lived out. You yeah. were, your folks had a place here right across from the high school. Right. And, well, yeah, when I was born, they were renting an apartment, uh, just off of Lake Burien, uh, a basement apartment in the Schickler house, I believe it was. And, um, and that the, was uh, our house, our quote unquote little house in Sunnydale was under construction. When mother went into labor, my dad and his stepfather were putting a roof on and she says that's more important than you coming and taking me to the hospital so she had her sister take her to the hospital because in those days fathers weren't present when babies were born anyway and uh so we moved into the little house in sunnydale when i was six months old and that was two houses south of sunnydale school uh just south of where Norma Boyer was, who taught piano lessons for many, many years to a lot of Sunnydale students. Um, it's now three houses south of Sunnydale School because they stuck another one in there when they took out the old community center. And uh, we were there until the war was over, and then we vagabonded in a trailer around California for a year or so and moved on to the property I still live on in 1947. Wow. So it's been, uh, <laughs> Jenny, you've had it for a long time. Yes. And you were only about six or seven years old uh, when you moved on to that property then. Four and a half. Oh, actually. four and a half. Oh, okay. Wow. So... You can probably recall many times when uh, you got a little bit of snow in the in the winter time, and uh, you'd get your sled out. And oh yeah, we we had a lot more snow in the winters then, and of course in 1950 we had the blizzard, uh, which started when we were at school, and they had a whole lot of fun getting all the kids home because somebody had to come pick us up and my dad was stuck downtown and my mother didn't drive and so the lady next door who was a from had just moved out here from Iowa and wasn't intimidated by snow came and picked me up <laughs> yeah she just she was used to it yeah, yeah. wow but uh our favorite place to sled used to be on a hundred and southwest one fiftieth, because one fiftieth went all the way through then before the tree weight cut it off, and um, we would go up the hill up 
to where by where the Chase Bank is now. Uh, and if you look at the lay of the land there, you can tell the hill was once higher than it is now. Mm. And uh, the trick was to get up enough speed at the top of the hill to go down the hill and up the incline at the bottom and across first. Of course, if it was snowy enough to sled, there weren't any cars out. Uh-huh. Which there wasn't a whole lot of cars back in those days anyway, and especially when it was had snowed. Yeah, and uh, we'd station a kid down at the bottom of the hill just in case some brave soul was coming and they could say, wait a minute. Uh-huh. But uh, for the most part, <laughs> it was wide open and we just sled. Yes, and I, I re remember when... Uh, <laughs> 150th and First Avenue, there was a, a Herfie's there, and then I think a, a Sizzler restaurant was on that corner too. Before the Toyota took out, took the whole block up there. Yeah. So there was a time when there was a gas station on every corner on 152nd and First, and there was another gas station up at 150th and First. Oh. On the west side, where the Toyota place is now. Yeah, there was uh, quite a few gas stations back in those days around. So, and uh, where Denny's is now, there was a house with people who had a lioness as a pet. Wow! And yeah. uh, you go up and knock on the uh, Dutch door, and the lioness would come up and, "Hello, what are you <laughs> doing here?" <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of, and there was a lot of back in those days. There was a lot of chicken farms in the area too. Oh, yeah. Where Village Lane Apartments was, which is now the Montrose, I think they call it, um, was a chicken ranch right across the street from the high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the chickens were gone, but the Chicken houses were still there. My younger brother went down exploring through the chicken houses and came back with an old uh, rocking chair that he still has. It was one of those kind with the carved backs. Uh huh. And uh, it had been left in one of the chicken houses. My aunt, who lived a couple of houses to the east of us, also had chickens and chicken houses in her back area, which is now the back parking lot of another part <laughs> apartment complex on 152nd. Oh, uh, yes. And uh, the townhouses used, uh, parking lot used to be in our backyard. <laughs> so As you... the apartment houses started going in, the relatives started peeling off their back pieces Oh yeah. When my aunt took tore down the chicken houses in about oh late sixties, uh, she found a wonderful crop of marijuana growing underneath them. She says, "Well, I know where the high school kids are hanging out." <laughs> yeah. So well. She was a horticulturalist. She knew what she was seeing. <laughs> uh huh. Which was popular back in the. 60s and 70s. 60s, yeah. So you went to Sunnydale grade school and then... Uh, Sylvester. Oh, you went to Sylvester. Eighth and ninth. Seventh grade was at Sunnydale still then. And then eighth and ninth at Sylvester. And then 10, 11, 12 at Highline. Okay. My uh, older son was at Highline the first year the ninth grade was back at Highline. Uh, so oh, okay. he got to do 7th and 8th at Sylvester and 9 through 12 at Highland. Ah, yeah. Well, that they've got the, quite a few grade schools and junior highs around the area. So they didn't know exactly. And then they ha also had uh, Sunny Terrace, which uh, it probably wasn't there when you were in grade school. No, but my brother went to it for... Oh, a okay. year or so, I think, when it first opened. And uh, my oldest son went there uh, 
through third grade and then they moved the boundary line and and he went to Sunnydale for the rest of grade school. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then uh I think it was around 1967 or 8 they put the 509 through there and kind of uh cut off 150th from the from the main part of Burien <clears throat> back right. at yeah my mother used to tease me when they put fourth avenue in down what used to be their driveway um she used to tease me about the fact that she had been on on the dead uh, on the dead end as it were i mean all the kids cut through there to get to the high school from the north end but uh when the freeway went in, then I was on the dead end, and she was on the main track. <laughs> ah. So one of your when you were at Highline, now you had uh, Leonard Johnson as your principal. Mm -hmm. He was there for many years uh, with his bullhorn. Oh, he had a bullhorn <laughs> that he used to get the kids' attention with. Evidently, <laughs> I see. Sure. Yeah. They were loitering in the halls. Oh, he kept a pretty good rain on the kids back in those days. Yeah. Well, I don't yep, And I had him, Harry Lemon for botany. And uh, Waskowitz, which he was a big part of, had started the year I was in the seventh grade, going sixth graders going. So I never got to do that. But I had known his wife virtually all my life because she was the librarian when the library was in the old caretaker's cottage by the field house. And, uh, and I knew him before I got to Highline too because my aunt was friends with the Lemons. But uh, he and his favorite line about You've seen a fuzzy peach, but you've never seen a hairy lemon. Uh, when I went on a trip in, I think it was about my junior year of high school. I had him my sophomore year, but my junior year, I went back to uh, the Midwest. And uh, when we were wandering through Illinois or Indiana, I can't remember which one, I saw a plant a uh, thing on a tree that looked every bit like a fuzzy peach so i had to bring it back for with me oh. <laughs> or like a hairy lemon i mean oh my god uh-huh uh, so i brought it back and i says here's your hairy lemon <laughs> yeah well i'd had him for botany and the year i had him for botany we'd gone back to virginia and uh washington dc and so i'd asked him it was during the period of time in May that we were collecting samples for our botany notebooks. And I asked him if I could go ahead and collect them on the way. And of course he was a history nut too. So he got a kick out of the grass from Henry House Hill at Bull Run and the ivy off the Smithsonian and the leaf off of the tree at Monticello. <laughs> wow, you got quite a collection right there. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Needless to say, that was good for an A. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. And then his wife was the librarian there at the, what the library at that time was on a fourth southwest and 152nd, like you said, next to the field house. Mm -hmm. And and now, 50 years later, 60 years later, it's, and it's, it's back there again. It's back there again in a big three story building yeah i uh, i was highly amused when town square went in and i says oh, they're back where they started where the field house and the library was mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah wow it's uh yeah <laughs> what comes around goes around yeah so uh, and you also had uh like you said in the earlier about the dr maids I believe, wasn't it? And he had yeah. an office on 152nd, or where was his office? His office was at oh, yes. one that looks like a house just west of the Masonic Temple. Oh, okay. Just, yeah, just a house west of there. 
Mm -hmm. I think it's lawyers or something like that in there. I believe you're right. Uh Uh-huh. So he was just a general practitioner. Yeah. But he was the first (laughs) full-time doctor in Burien. Oh, wow. And uh, he was there until about my sophomore year of college, I think, was when he committed suicide. Oh. Using the same gun his wife had used a year earlier. Oh, boy. Ooh. Well, that didn't work out very well. <laughs> but you also uh, experienced uh, a few earthquakes. Yes. In your time here in Burien. Yes, I was in school at recess when the 49 quake hit. And my reaction to that was to run across, zigzag across Sunnydale's play field. I think maybe I was trying to run away from it. It's the only reason I can think of to take off and run. Uh But I can distinctly remember doing that. And then when the 65 quake hit, I was standing at the corner of 152nd and 1st on my way to work as a teller at Seattle First, which is now Bank America. And uh, I stood there and I looked over my head at all the wires going over my head and said, hmm, I really shouldn't be standing here. But by the time I move, it's going to be o- over. So I just waited. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then when the 2001 quake hit, I was working at uh, Burien Veterinary Hospital, and uh, everybody goes flying for the door, and they said, are you going to come join us? And I said, why? I said, by the time you get out there, it's going to be over, and I've got this nice big counter in front of me, because I was in the process of backing up the computer. It was lunchtime when we didn't have office calls. So I just proceeded with what I was doing while they stood out and watched the earthquake. But I figured, why go outside? I've got this nice thick counter in front of me. If anything starts falling off of the ceiling, I can just duck under it. There you go. (laughs) Find a doorway or something to Mm -hmm. protect yourself. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. After you've been through a couple of big earthquakes, you don't get as shook up. (laughs) No, you're kissing me. Generally speaking. It's, it's not. It's, it's always a surprise, but it, uh, if you've been through one, you get a little more used to it, I yeah. guess. Yeah. The well. only uh, thing now is that if we have one, I want to be home where I can grab my grandfather's clock, which goes back to 1880 and sits in my bedroom. Because mm-hmm. I don't want it to hit the floor. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so... Uh, but back to the field house, there was a, you had a, what, campfire girls meet there or? Yeah, we had uh, our uh, fly up ceremonies on the stage at the old field house where you went from Bluebird to Campfire Girl and Campfire to Horizon and, and you know, big get togethers where you might have more than one group together. And uh, they used to have garden shows there, and my aunt was part of Sunnydale Garden Club, so she participated in a lot of those. Somewhere or another, I've got pictures from one of them. (laughs) So, yeah, and they also, you had, uh, uh, there was girls softball, wasn't there, or baseball there at the play field? Yeah, there was a, a diamond behind the the field house field there. House, yeah. uh-huh. And then the winter had quite often flood, and then people would oh, flood. <laughs> get their ice skates out or yeah. something. Uh huh. Well, yeah. When I was when my parents were living just off of Lake Burien, uh, mother was pregnant with me. Uh, Lake Burien froze, and my dad rescued a kid that fell through the ice. And, of course, our puppy at the time, who was six months older than me, mother practiced on the dog, uh, (laughs) um, tried to follow him out. So 
he's rescuing the kid that fell through the ice and mother is rescuing the dog. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that might have been quite of a... But at least, yeah, both were saved, so that was <laughs> good. Yeah. It, Lake Beery and I recall, it froze not often, but every now and then uh, we'd have a pretty hard uh, uh, cold weather for a few days and it would freeze over. Mm -hmm. And the kids, even even uh, as recently as maybe 15 years ago, I saw some kids out, actually people out ice skating on Lake Burien, which uh, that's very rare, but uh, yes, it does happen now and then. So, yeah. And then you also, uh, uh, I guess a few other things that uh, happened in uh, your stay there and uh, kind of the Sunnydale area. You went to uh, uh, grade school there at Sunnydale. Yep, through seventh grade. Okay. Oh. Seventh grade was still at, at Sunnydale then. <laughs> and uh, I had Ruth Barbie for my seventh, seventh grade teacher. And she was what I call a shoestring aunt. She was my mother's sister's sister in law. And. Uh, after the seventh grade, she took Cindy Spear and I. Uh, she had known Monty Spear's family for a long time, too. Um, on a trip, seven-week-long trip through the Southwest, uh, we went through uh, Salt Lake City and uh, swam in the Great Salt Lake. Uh <laughs> and uh, Bryce and Zion and Grand Canyon and Carlsbad Caverns and across from El Paso into Juarez well, that was... back in the days when it was two dollars to cross one way and one dollar to cross the other Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then came back up through Mesa Verde and the Rockies and we well, had a good time. Yeah, that would have been a fun, fun trip. And especially, you know, you, you got to see a lot of different cool sites. And uh, it was good. A lot of education you learned during the trip. So yeah. that was a fun. A lot of state capitals, uh, Den Denver and Helena. And <laughs> yeah, that would have been a great trip. There was one time that we uh, got going or went a little too late and there weren't any uh, hotel rooms available. And we'd been camping most of the time anyway, but there weren't any hotel rooms available in the little town that we were in. So we camped out on the co courthouse lawn. We figured that was the safest place in town to camp. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Good idea. <laughs> so you've remained here in Burien, uh, through after you've retired and uh, you still have plenty of family right around you over there in your near your house and I think yeah my oldest son and his wife and youngest granddaughter are in the house that was my parents house right behind me uh I had bought back the house that I'm in it was originally built in 1950 when my younger brother came along and uh we outgrew the little house we were in and they uh, kept that as a rental and, and moved into the front house. And I'd always liked that house. And uh, I had told my mother in the early seventies that if it ever came on the market, I wanted her to let me know. And in 72, it came on the market and we grabbed it. <laughs> wow. That good opportunity there. And you grabbed a, Grabbed it when you had the chance. And then, like I say, my son and his family are in what was my parents' house. Well, I I had figured that sooner or later it would behoove me to be living next to my parents as they got older. And uh, it was a good thing because my mother developed dementia as she got older. And we kept her at home as long as we could after my dad passed away because it was something that was familiar to her. Uh, when she got to the point where we couldn't keep her any longer, then, of course, we had to put her in a 
a home, but uh, we, uh, between my brother and I, we managed managed as long as we could. Uh huh. Now you also were very close to uh, Sunnydale Grocery Store there on 152nd and uh, Des Moines Way. There were yes. a couple different grocery stores. I know. Uh, well, the one in the triangle was Sunnydale Grocery. Uh huh. Uh, and that was where we all we kids would stop on the way home from school and get penny candy. Uh, and uh, that was back in the day when mother could hand me a dollar bill and send me down to get milk or bread and bring back the change. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, and then they developed, uh, I think Gin's Alls had a grocery store there across the street from there. Well. Really kind of by the bowling yeah, alley. Cushing's, uh, mm -hmm. who lived on uh, the lake that used to be there. Oh, Laura Lake, I think. It yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they had uh, had the grocery store for a long time. And uh, then when the airport took everything over and expanded, that so went the <laughs> grocery stores. Yeah, and the bowling alley. But, uh, Gonzales's had the produce area that was the top level of Sunnydale Market, and then the grocery store was down a little slope on the lower level. Oh, uh -huh. with a live butcher. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that was a popular, uh, popular uh, grocery store there. They did yeah. good little business. Yeah. Wow. So you've seen a lot of a lot of different things uh, develop in uh, along uh, all these different areas in Burien and uh, Sunnydale, Des Moines Way. Yes. Yes, I remember Des Moines Way when it was brick. Oh yeah! Wow, and the elm trees. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then there was a Des Moines Way nursery, which just oh, was yeah, just up there. Mm-hmm. And. Uh... Several nurseries uh, back in those days. Uh, yeah. Uh, Balzarini's had Five Corners Nursery, and Seeky's had the Des Moines Way Nursery. Uh huh. Ben Seeky being the last one of that crowd, I think. And uh, there used to be a lot of Japanese in this area before World War II. And of course, they were all sent off to camps in World War II when. Kadamas came back and Sikis came back, but not everybody else did. Oh, uh-huh. Uh, but, uh, yeah. My yeah. Mother had a lot of Japanese girlfriends when she was at Highline in the 30s before the war. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, well, gee, Dixie, we have covered a lot of... Uh, uh, ground today and it's been pretty it's uh, been very interesting learning about the different uh, uh things that you've done in Burien since you were uh just a baby yeah so mother, mother and I used to since she never drove used to walk up uh from where we lived across from Highline used to walk up the north side of 152nd all the way down to the post office which was on 10th and 152nd at the time where mm -hmm. the realty office is now and then we'd cross the street and we'd stop at the water company and we'd drop in to see uh john eder at the tin shop because he'd done a lot of things with my dad and then we'd come on up to uh Seattle Trust and Savings Bank that took the electric bill, and then we'd go up to Highline Pharmacy that took the phone bill, and then we'd work our way back home. Yeah, you hit all your different <laughs> utilities right there. Yeah. Didn't need a stamp, just uh, dropped them off, right? And, right. Yeah. Wow, that's... I still drop the water bill off whenever I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, why pay for a stamp if you don't have to? No, that's right. And it's right there uh, on 153rd now, yep. so... That works out pretty nice too. Uh, so you and your mom did a lot of uh, 
But people did more walking back then too. So yeah, well, she <laughs> she'd walked from Meadowdale to Alki once when she had a oh she had a a stepmother who tended to throw things when she got mad, and uh, so one day when uh, her stepmother was in throwing mood, she took off from Meadowdale and walked out to Alki where her sister lived. <laughs> that is a very long walk. Yeah. I can see that could take her all day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But, uh, walking was something that never intimidated mom. It's probably one reason she kept going until she was 90. Uh huh. Yeah, absolutely. Even with dementia. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Yes. And then there was uh, also up around 136, 38, there was uh, Dave's place. I don't know if you ever went up to there to, you know, it kind of was a kind of a hangout for kids in the in their 50s. I believe it was kind of the earlier. 50s. Maybe you were a little too young at the time. But, uh, yeah, that was kind of a hangout. Yeah. Luz was just coming in when I was in high school. Uh -huh. I think around 1957, Luz yeah. went in there. And that was a popular, popular place yeah. all through the the 60s kind of a hangout yeah my uh, high school class has a facebook page class of 60 for highline and mount rainier since we do our reunions together and uh it's one of the things that has a picture on the facebook oh, page. <laughs> yeah i have a lot of a lot of people that's very interesting because people all, everybody recognizes blues. Yeah. But the big, the big. Of course, it was the second one. The first one was in White Center. Hmm. Yes, that was two of them. White Center, which was, the, I believe, the first one. And then yeah. the Luz Burian came along right. within about a year or so. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that was a lot of fun. And then they had a lot of, uh, kids just had uh hot rods back then and they used to just sit and uh get a milkshake or a burger and hang out yep so well gee it was good uh good good conversation so i i, I thank you very much for coming in to, and doing this with me today so i hope uh maybe we'll do it again sometime so thank you dixie we'll